6th, 11th, and 13th, October 4th and 31st, November 1st, 7th, 16th, 20th, 28th, and 29th, December 11th, January 2nd and 3rd, 2024, January 22, the 30th, the 31st, and February 1st, 2024. No, I know. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilwoman Carlo and second by Councilman Watkins. Secretary, call for the vote. Oh. Jim Inks. Ryan Jumping Eagle Sr. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella John Carlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. David Puyer. Don Roy Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Fifteen yes, one not voting. Motion carried. Chair, a motion to approve the executive committee minutes for August 9th, September 1st, the 20th, 20th, and 29th, October 2nd, the 13th, 18th, 25th, November 8th, the 17th, the 29th, 29th of 2023, January 17th, and the 24th of 2024. Okay, so we have motion by Councilman Carl, second by Councilman Puyer. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Inks. Yes. Ryan Jumping Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. David Puyer, Don Roy Gosper, Sonia Little Hawk Weston, John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Mr. Linderman, would you like to vote? It's to approve the executive board minutes. Sixteen unanimous. Motion carried. That is all from the secretary's office. I appreciate the vote. Thank you. Councilman Boyer. Chair, I got a question for the secretary. Okay. Are the secretaries listed on, on the agenda and the treasurer? Is that set by ordinance, how those are done? Yes, 1301. It sets the agenda, like how they're supposed to proceed. Um, so. If you look on that, I could send it out to you, but it, it is the only one that's not on that ordinance is the vice president. Okay, I think we need to address this in law and order to un and I'll make that motion to bring it to law and order because I really feel that the secretary's office and the treasurer needs to be up under there after the districts before, before we do the committees. So I'll make that motion. Yeah, to refer, I know, that's what I said, to law and order. So you don't want to run a motion? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so just disregard, yes. Pass Creek District. Uh, we're going to move on to the next agenda line item in this Pass Creek District. Oh, okay. Can you, can you go get her, uh, at Mr. Ann? 
So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to the Pass Creek uh, District Executive Board. Um, good afternoon. Uh, I just came up to follow up on a um, on an action that was tabled uh, regarding the uh, Lola Lakota housing, and uh, there was table for you guys to bring it back, and it's been two months and nothing came back. So I'm trying to follow up to see if we're gonna allow it, and you know the other recommendation I have is that. I think uh, our uh, district chairs are willing to um, take over being on the board and give that charter back to the back to the people. So I came, I came to ask and to see if you guys got a deadline. If you got it done, it said it didn't come back on the council floor. Councilwoman Little Hawk West, you have a question. Yeah, uh, we did have a, a district meeting last night, but um, we didn't get a quorum uh, with the executive board. But I was, uh, I, I, I received a call this morning from our district chair, Miss Mary Tobacco, and she said the uh, Crazy Horse uh, planning met Saturday, all the chairmen, women, and uh, that was one of their um, actions was to give back the charter or the put the board back in place with housing and they all agreed i guess pass creek was the one that brought that forward and so they do agree she did uh tell me this morning that um she voted no on it it was only to take it back to our district and get our district's uh concurrence but we didn't get a quorum last night so she's gonna bring it back on the next meeting district meeting i think next week and, but she's told me to, uh, that she was in, uh, in support of it too, if, but she just wanted to get concurrence from our district. So I guess they did meet on it and they are asking that we put the uh, board back in place with uh, housing. And so I think that um, that's something I think that I know uh, Pass Creek did bring a couple of resolutions a while back. I can't remember what uh, month that was Lydia, but uh, uh, one of them was to put the, give the, uh, was it the charter back to public safety and uh, also to give the uh, one back to housing and put the board back in place. But those both got, um, I don't know if they were tabled or what happened here, but um, she's right, we're supposed to deal with it. So maybe we need to if you look at the minutes, uh, this this action was taken on November first of twenty three, when you guys tabled it, and it was supposed to come back. And I I brought um, two resolutions that time, and one was to remove the chief of police and the um, CEO of housing, and that failed. And then the uh, second resolution was to return that charter back to the people and let the uh, districts up have their own um, board members to serve instead of the tribal council. And that one, it passed. And after I got the votes that it passed, um, you guys tabled it and said, you're gonna take it back to committee and look at how the board is gonna be composed or whatever. Question, go ahead, councilwoman. You know, when I did bring this up at HHS committee, um, Mr. Dave Puyer said that it did pass in committee to go back to the nine member. That's what Dave said. Go ahead, Councilman. I thought we passed it, but then it would go out to vote, like the, when this fall when you have the elections. <clears throat> so it was then there'd be that one from each district. It wasn't giving it to the district to let them appoint. It's a referendum vote. Okay. Um, go ahead, Councilman Cross. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, 
again, you know, um, I attended a meeting on Saturday. I was invited out there to talk about the resolution that was that that the past week brought to the tribal council. Um, and heard a lot of discussion from a lot of the district chairs on on concerns, you know, regarding the CEO about his job performance out there and not having confidence on in his performance and issues that are issues that are within the the organization itself. And so th those are some of the concerns, but but there is um there was a consensus of all the district chairs that that they, that they would support the nine member board according to them and uh, according to the resolution from past Creek that that they thought that there should be some representation from each district because housing is you know spread out in each district and you know there lately there's been concerns and issues you know going on within the you know within the um, clusters and you know trying to deal with those and uh, and i know there's a there's a lot of issues that that we each go through or we get calls on you know um and and, and um meth related or evictions and you know home repairs or i mean there's just there's just a lot of issues that 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 seem like the districts have but they don't seem like they have no representation even though as council reps you know we we do get those calls and stuff you know like like myself, I don't sit on the HHS committee, but and I, I get numerous calls on on issues, and and then I don't know. And, and, I, and Ramon's really a hard person to get a hold of. Let's put it that way, you know, he, he he doesn't answer his phone, or he's selective on who who he talks to, you know. So that that's a concern from not only myself but from the community. And so they felt as a as a board that that they can get these address, these issues addressed at their meetings, you know. So I know there's pros and cons to nine member boards, and it's you know, but but that's what that's what they want, you know. So I, I and I and I support them, you know. And that, so I just want to bring that to the council's attention. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And so that's what I I I, I came forward to ask, and you know, you guys should have a, a plan to transition this before the election. Because when the election comes, it's gonna be everything's gonna be on a ballot, and then there's gonna be no communication when you guys go into lame duck, and nothing's gonna get done. So I think you guys should put a plan together and get get uh, the board in place, and you know have a meeting with them as HHS and explain to the board where housing is and what should be done, could be done, and what needs to happen. You know that that communication and make that transition smooth than to put everybody on the ballot. Well, that's what that's what I have and I kinda we kinda want some answers. If if you guys are gonna allow that charter and allow people, you know, to be equally represented on that um housing board. Councilwoman Howerson. You know, I think because um, it was stated in committee that it did pass and, um, you know, the work that all the Crazy Horse Planning Commission does, um, you know, I don't, I don't believe it's right that council does manage the board for housing. And so I guess I'll make a motion in support of Crazy Horse Planning Commission that the housing board go to um, their elected official on that board. The district chair with their, um, of the Crazy Horse Planning Commission. Okay, uh, question over here. Go ahead, uh, Councilman Pillier. I, so the last time the board, the housing commissioners were in, there were some rules that HUD lays down to I don't know if any of them district chairs. One of the one of them that comes sticks to my mind is that they can't owe housing rent. So if any of them owe rent, they can't be on the board. So I think whoever them district chairs are, if this they're going to have to get in compliance with the HUD 
regulations. Okay. Um, go ahead, Councilor Nowers. I just also wanted to state that um, they do have housing board um, funds for um, other officials for the housing board already in their financial plan. So any kind of stipends or anything is an uh, issue with transitioning to the Crazy Horse Planning Commission. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilman Havelson and second by Councilman Cross. Secretary, call for the vote. Anna, just for clarification, so your um, motion is to support the Crazy Horse Planning Commission that the housing board goes to the districts to be seated with the chairman of each district. Okay, thank you. Okay, go ahead. So chair, sure, here we are firing from the hip, hip again. There's nothing in, in writing, no paperwork. I'm all in support of a board too, but I, we don't have nothing in front of us. Let's, I'll make a motion to table and have Crazy Horse Planning come to the HHS meeting with with paperwork. And then we can, from there, we'll forward on to council. So my motion is to table. During that Saturday meeting, they did they did talk about the- Come on, Chair, you gotta stick with the rules. They did talk about yes. the rules. So we're gonna go ahead and run the, run the motion. We'll have to bring those issues back. Um, who's second? Second by Councilman Youngman. Uh, Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Jim Inks? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. No. Wendell Youngman, Jr. Yes. James Cross? No. Anna Halverson? No. Ella Giancarlo? Yes. George Dreamer Jr. No. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Donroy Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Yeah. John Stale Sr. No. Craig Dillon. Nine yes, five no, two not voting, motion carried. Councilman Still. Yes, sir. Uh, back in nineteen sixties. We were the first tribe in the United States to contract our housing. And HUD came down and wanted to get away from tribal politics. So the housing was our first charter to get it away from tribal council and tribal politics. And so they created a housing board and a charter for HUD and we got the housing issue. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, um, Pass Creek, was, was that everything? Okay. So we're gonna move on to the next agenda line item, Law and Order Committee. And I'll turn it over to the chair. Thank you, Chairman. Um, we got the selection of East Wing Casino Managers. It was requested to be brought onto this council.
Oh, we could start up. Roger, are you in too on this? So you got to... Chair, I think the way we'll do this is we'll go with the first two, and while we're waiting for Rogers, we'll have the other two step out, and we'll go with ladies first. We'll go with Jermaine. Okay. Then Stanley, then, but we'll have those other two step out while we're asking these questions. All right. So at this time, we'll have the, um, the candidate step out. And Chair, we'll keep it to 10 minutes, five minutes for their introduction, five minutes for questions. Okay, so five and five. Five and five, where's the Sergeant Arms? Where's your clock? Pulled out three bananas from his pocket. Jermaine, go ahead. Yes. I'm Petr Baste, Jermaine Redcott, Garnier, Umachiapi. I greet each and every one of you with a heartfelt handshake. I'd like to say thank you for all your hard work and dedication to the Oyate as our tribal leaders. I come before you today as one of the applicants for the position as the Eastwind Casino General Manager. I am an enrolled member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. My grandparents are Bernard and Christine Redcloud, and my mother is Charlotte Redcloud Good. They raised me and guided me to be a strong Lakota woman that lives by traditional values. I have 11 years of experience in the casino gaming industry. I worked at Periwin Casino and was able to wor work my way up to the management position in my area. I learned that being in a management position, it carried a big responsibility. And in such a position, I must have accountability to the employees and the guests that walk through the door every day. I do have 15 years total of management experience, 11 years earned at PwC and four years earned in the other positions that I held within the tribal structure. My management skills include team building, goal setting, critical thinking, problem solving, planning, organization, time management, presentation, communication, empathy, and conflict resolution. I have experience in budgeting and working with financial numbers. I also have a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration and Management, along with the AA in Tribal Law. I graduated with a GPA of 3.45 and awarded, and I was awarded a cum laude. We, while earning my degrees, I had a full-time job and home life responsibilities. I earned my college degree not only for the betterment of myself, but a betterment for our, for our Oyate. I want to help make a difference in our economic stability. I always heard our elders in my community say, go get your education so you can help your people. These words have helped me to accomplish my educational goal. I believe with an educated mind, I'll be able to make a well-rounded decision 
using my mind and heart as a guidance. So today I come before you to offer my service. I have a creative mind to help create promotions that are fun entertainment without giving the house away. <laughs> promotions are a way to attract the public and giving employees are, and the employees roles are to have good guest relations. I have learned that people like change in monthly promotions, meaning the casino must change the promotions on a monthly basis. I will work side by side with the marketing director to help promote East Wind Casino as a place of destination. The state of South Dakota generates billions of dollars off the tourism industry. So we need to market East Wind Casino as a place of destination before or after they visit the Black Hills. East Wind Casino, as we well know, is located on Highway 18. I believe it needs some old school advertisement. We should have a billboard at every entrance to our reservation in Rapid City and Wall Drug and one at Wounded Knee, advertising in all the local newspapers promoting the various promotions are the new slot machines, do radio and television advertisements. We need to create a catchphrase slogan to promote East Wind. Another item needed is East Wind Casino need, needs its own mission statement. By giving it its own mission statement, <coughs> it will help it will help give the employees, the customers and vendors and other stakeholders um sorry organization for existence and description of its purpose you know that's what a mission statement does it helps promote the business i do understand east wind casino is under prairie wind casino's gaming umbrella but east wind casino is its own business and needs to be established as such do you have any questions for me council floor is open Go ahead, Councilwoman. First of all, I just want to um, uh, thank um, Jermaine for coming forward again to um, show it. I guess let us know that she's interested in the general manager for the East Wind Casino. I think we heard your interview when you um, applied for the general manager for Prairie Winds. And I think you talked about all the experience that you have because you worked in the casino at one time. Yes. So um, I guess we're really concerned, uh, it seems like with the revenue uh, attracting outside you know, uh, entities come in to, uh, to the gaming industry within our gaming uh, casino and, and how, uh, if you were selected, how are you going to work with marketing and bring an outside revenue into the East Winds Casino? First of all, we would um, I would need to know what the budget is, what the budget is for marketing, because in that budget should be a line item for advertising. We need to advertise it. We need to put it out there. I went out to East Wind the other day and I did not even know that they were giving away a car. And it was the day that I was over there. It was February 25th, they gave away a car. But nobody knew that, I didn't know that. You know, I'm not Facebook savvy, but by getting it marketing, we need to hit that marketing hard, we need to hit it fast. That's what tourism, hitting those tourism dollars, those billboard signs, I swear will help you know, because our customer base, they're not tech savvy. They need to hold it in their hands. They need to look at it. I brought an example with me today. I picked up this, this the Native Sun newspaper the other day, and right at the bottom, across the bottom page there, says the Lodge Deadwood, no money. That's their new machine. We need to promote our machines. A lot of people don't know exactly what's out there. When I looked into it, there's 128 machines out there according to that website, but even that website wasn't up to date. And out of the 128 machines out there, 10 of them were down. So that's hurting, you know. 
But working side by side, I'll be able to see what it cost at last year's marketing, what this year's budgeted for, and we could run off of it. Promotions need to be done in quarters, I believe. When this, when we're in this quarter, that next promotion needs to be ready to go and hit the ground. Customers want accountability to the things that are being said and done at the business there. They want a place to come and play that's comfortable. They want a clean environment and they want stability. Stability goes back to making sure that our employees are at work doing their job and everybody's doing their role within that organization, you know? So the marketing affects all these areas there, you know? I also thought of employee morale because that was what was asked of me last time. Employee morale is, a, I have a quick fix for it. You would create employee of the month and that employee of the month would get a little reward and their name would be put in a barrel. And at the end of the year, we draw from that whole big barrel and we get to send our employee off on a real vacation. You know, all of this plays a factor in our marketing and um, promoting this, the, um, this gaming business right here. Right now, it's really not on the map, but by hitting the marketing advertising, we can get it onto the map, like I said, a place of destination. I see there's a lot of potential out there too, that things that can be done in time. As you well know, I'm a gold setter, would have short-term, long-term goals, and we would um, bring in little things to bring the people in too. We would partner with people that are in Martin there to make this happen, you know? So marketing is, like I said before, it can make or break a business. Any questions? Okay, go ahead, Councilman Cross. Um, thank you, Jermaine. Uh, huh. Are you familiar with the NIGC 543 and what it entails? I recently started researching NIGA, you know, and what it's all about. I'm a, I'm a person that um, likes to research things. I don't know exactly that one that you're quoting there, but I do have with me, you know, the... Okay, can I... Um, go ahead. It's, it's class, it's between the, there's a difference between class two and class three machines. And, and um, East Winds is class two. Yes, yes it is. <clears throat> I do understand that. Um, East Wind is a class two establishment and that it's also located in a checkered area of our reservation. Class two is gaming, kind of what NIGA defined it as is, um, are the in, yeah, Indian Gaming Regulatory Act is, it's mainly like a bingo, but those machines out there from what I recall from when I worked out to Prairie Winds was they're, the, they're state machines. They're um, kind of like video lottery and Kino and like that, you know. And oh. right along with class two gaming, you could also have non-banked card games. That's meaning you can have poker, you know. That's another thing that I could bring to the table too. I'm well knowledgeable in that area. I trained over 50 dealers and I trained more than 10 pit bosses that came through Prairie Wind Casino's doors. I could I can bring that there. That's the potential that I see there is bringing a card room to East Wind Casino and we all know with the card player he's going to he or she's going to bring a significant other a friend or relatives to play those games while they're sitting there playing cards. Thank you. Councilman Still. Yeah, Ms. Grundy, I don't know what you meant by state machine, but uh, I told Governor, Governor Dugard I was going to put a casino in Martin. Mm -hmm. Second time I met him, I said, the casino is up and operating. He said, what? 
I said, I told you. He said, oh, yeah. He remembered. We don't have to report to the state on anything. That is a casino that belongs to the tribe. Has nothing to do with the state. Hurry Winds does. We got a compact with the state. You East Winds has a, is, is on its own. Tribal. I apologize. I must, you must have misunderstood my answer there. So I apologize. Okay, so uh, with with that, uh, I'm going to have to give her um, a closing here. So, thank you for the questions. I applied for this job because I have a passion, a passion for gaming, a passion for business. I want not just a betterment for myself, but for my whole Oyate. I want to help create revenue that gives us that betterment that gives our younger people that hope that we are doing all that we can and that we are behind them getting their education that it does matter you know if selected to become east wind east wind's general manager i'll lead the organization in a positive manner upholding the policies and procedures and protect the assets of East Wind Casino. Communicate with all stakeholders in a timely manner. Be truthful and honest. Have accountability to the organization. Have transparency with any and all records. Be accessible by having an open door policy. Educate myself in areas I'm weak in and to make East Wind Casino a place of destination. I would like to thank you for your time and I'd appreci appreciate your support by selecting me to be your next general manager for East Wind Casino. Wopila he chichi ya. Tunkashi la ni chi un. Oh, Wopila. We'll call on your next one. <laughs> yeah, so so thank you, uh, Sergeant Arms, for uh, uh, giving him the, the lot of time five and five, so you, you can begin anytime you want. Well, good afternoon, Council. My name is Stanley Low White Man. Um, start off with, I've been the supervisor at um, East Winds on two separate occasions. I've also been the general manager. In my time there, um, I guess you'd say we advanced the class two to become a, a kind of a revenue pot. We were able to generate enough money to purchase um, uh, what's referred to as a horseshoe bar, as well as uh, 20 some odd acres. And also during the um, COVID period, we'd been able to generate enough money where we was able to pay our um, staff through the whole COVID period. And then when we went to reopen, we still had enough um, money to fill up the, um, all the cashiers as well as the vault. We was able to uh, continue on. Um, so I think it's still one of the uh, businesses that the tribe has that 
isn't really fully um, up to its potential yet. There are plans in the future to at least try to uh, fix the horseshoe bar to become a larger facility. And I think through marketing and advertising, we would be able to uh, generate a lot more than what we did in the past. So I do that again. And I don't know, I just, one of those people that think out of the box that we can do things and we're able to uh, move forward and be able to accomplish it. So I don't know, don't, well, one thing, I want to thank John for bringing up my law enforcement background because that's something that very seldom seen. But I retired from there and uh, had many different career fields. As, uh, where are you going? Good. Okay. Is there any questions? Go ahead, Councilman Cross. Um, Stanley, uh, um, I don't know how many council reps go into the state of Nebraska and to some of those businesses there, but does they have like two or three casino of slot machines there? And I, I always wondered about those if they were class two or they had to be. I, I mean, I don't know what they what they were, but um, I was, I was thinking, I, I wonder how that would work if that would work on the reservation. You know, if there was if they had some slot machines and, and some of the businesses, you know, I, I know like, I know like Yankton Sioux Tribe has about 10 of them in their, in their C store. Um, and I know we, we talked about this to try to get at least 10 of them at, at the store in Pass Creek, you know, and that, that is a travel store. We just kind of help with the revenue with, with the casinos, you know, and especially at this time when we really need a district allocation in, 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 because we're not, our districts have been hurting for some time, you know, because we haven't seen no allocation, but they're just like you going outside the box to, you know, trying to be creative with that. But is that an option, you know, selected as a, as a GM? You know, one of the things that <clears throat> when, you, when this was first brought up, one of the things that if you remember, I mentioned that we needed to build the infrastructure up um, East winds in order to accommodate, um, moving other machines to other districts and stuff. And that's one of the things that we have to look at. We don't have the space at the point at this point. In the future, there is that possibility. If you could get, uh, if we could get um, the horseshoe part of it up and running, there is space in there to be able to accommodate for the servers, servers that need to uh, monitor those types of machines and stuff. So, it's possibility, but it's not right now. We just need the space in order to accommodate it. Any more questions? Oh, okay. So um, we'll, we'd like to see if, uh, if you would like to close. Well, I guess uh, what I can say is that if I am selected for the GM position, there are other things beside the um, um, moving um, machines, class two machines into different venues on the reservation. There are things that we've looked at for future, but that's kind of far range planning. And that is that you guys have a compact right now class three compact in it, you have over 700 machines available to you. <clears throat> but yet the Prairie Winds Casino has roughly 350 or 360 machines, which means that there's an excess of machines that you have under class three. Now, if we can get um, the Horseshoe Bar uh, venue in place in the future, what I'd like to see is that it also become a second site under that compact 
to be able to provide uh, class two machines as well as um, a poker room. Now I realize in Martin there's um, what they call um, garage poker going on. You know, so there are people playing poker in those areas, which I don't know if the state don't look at it, but it's there. So that in itself is a plan. Um, but again, too, like I said, these are kind of uh, future planning that needs to be done. Uh, right now, we just need to continue what we have, look at that space that is the future. And if it's if it happens, there's a lot of other things that can take place with the gaming for the tribe. So anyway, that's just letting you know that I, I've thought about the future, of where we could be, where we're at right now. I haven't um, um, discarded any of the ideas that came through council in the past. It's just been there, just that we haven't been able to accommodate class two in any place else. So that's kind of my closing is we do have a future. Uh, well, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you can uh, begin anytime you like, and it's. Uh, you need me to sign in first, or? Yes, you can sign in. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Roger Brinksenbach. I am uh, the currently the acting general manager at Eastman Casino. I've been at Eastman Casino for numerous amount of years. Um, I basically took over the management position back in 2014. Um, April of this year would have been 10 years of straight management be, uh, being at Eastman Casino. Um, I know a lot of you guys are on the EBND committee. Um, last EBND, I stated that I wasn't going to try, but you know, I got a little bit of uh, encouragement from some other Marine buddies, they talked me through it. So I decided to come back and reapply for it. Um, you know, uh, they like what they told me as an old Sergeant Major told me was, you know, if somebody's going against you, you must be doing something right. So you must be doing something good to be where you're at. So just keep trying. So that's why I'm back here applying again, you know, um, I basically know this casino inside out. I know everything about it. When I first moved there, I was an outsider. Throughout the years, I mean, I live right in Martin. I live right in Martin, so anytime there's a discrepancy, an emergency, I'm like a two, three minute drive away from the casino. So the, the casino, you know, I'm at its disposal when they need me. There are times when I went out there like 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, so I didn't hesitate. Um, like I said, it's, I pretty much know this building. I know the casino. I know that, like, like I say, I was the outsider getting back to that, but after living in this community for a while, you get, you tend to get to know the community. You know, there's really good, a lot of good people in Martin, you know, and Allen, Kyle, Wombly get to know all the regular customers coming in and they're really nice people, you know, and I enjoy working out there, you know, and I, I hope that I do get to get back in and continue this journey on being the GM and, you know, hopefully eventually that building will be 
done and settled with, get into trust land, and I could help that be a transition into that. You know, that building has been sitting there for years, even before I was the GM. And, you know, for that, you know, it, and recently, just last year, we found out, you know, that the application finally just kicked off. You know, whenever the purchase of that building was even purchased before, I was the GM. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, if anything, I used to win. I started out as shift supervisor, um, acting, you know, GM. I was just a, a management position underneath when the curry wind was over it. Uh, so, I have all the management experience that you guys are looking for. Uh, if there's any questions, I don't really have anything else. Uh, any questions? Oh, because go ahead, Councilman Cross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question on um on on employees is is. is are the employees hanging on to their jobs or is there high turnover rate or if there is and what what is what is causing it um are, are the employees you got a lot of long-term employees that have been there for a long time and versus um a turnover rate the turnover rate is pretty high um we went through phases like i said i've been there for years so i'd seen different phases we went to hiring the older employees to middle age you know we went through all these different phases trying to see what works out and eventually we're at the stage of we were we're hiring the younger ones but these younger ones have the mentality of wanting to go party now i mean it doesn't fall on the casino itself it's just basically the in individuals themselves that are not coming to work they're not showing up so you know i do as much as i can to try to keep them around I'm giving them chances after chances, and eventually, after a while, you know, that just goes way too far. Other employees feel it's not fair because, you know, they're getting away with too much. So eventually, I have to let them go just because, you know, it's not fair to everybody else. But I do try and hold on to every employee as long as I can. Um, with the long term ones, we do have a very rare list of uh, long term employees. I believe there's about four, five of them, including myself, that have been there the longest. And from there, I believe there's probably about four that are over a year mark. But I mean, that's basically how it looks on the turnover rate. I mean, it, it's not that, you know, that I'm pushing them out or anything. It's just I am giving them chances. It's just that they're the ones that are not showing up to work. Um, they don't call in to work. They pull no calls. They don't come to work the next day again. They come to work for two days. They don't come to work in the next two days. So, I mean, it's it just basically falls on the individual that they, if they want to keep their job and they want to come to work, they come to work. But, you know, I can't force anybody to come to work. I can't go to their house and say, hey, get over here. It's your, it's your schedule shift, you know. So... Any more questions? Four months. So um, with that, um, um, if you'd like to give a closing, you're more than welcome. Yep. Um, so like I said, whenever we did this, this job, you know, back whenever I wasn't the GM, back in December of 2021, we were in the same position again. Um, you know, I didn't want the position at first. You know, I I restrained from it, and there's quite a few of you here that gave me words of encouragement, you know, like Austin and Alla. You know, we were in an executive session in that meeting, and you guys talked me into this position of, you know, you're going to come across these political, political views of people not wanting you in this position, people not, they're going to push against you, but you're just going to have to stand up and put up with it. You know, so I still hope that that supports here uh, today. Um, and Ron was the one who made the made the vote to reopen up the advertisement only if I put foot back in. So I did. 
And so that's how I, become, I became the GM after Stanley. Um, but right now, I mean, if it was back to the way it was, this probably just would have been a contract renego renegotiation with Stanley because this is his third year. It would have been his third year. But, you know, he he went off and went on to retirement. I put in, um, there was five applicants. And then, then you guys cut it down to two. And then that's when you guys asked why I didn't um, put in for the position. So I did. You know, I did what you guys asked. You know, you guys encouraged me. You know, I stepped up. That's where we're at today. We're back at the same position. Uh, we're doing the process of hiring for a GM. Um, other than that, um, oh, another thing too is um, if I do not get the position, I would like to uh, readdress the council again just on the terms of uh, end of contract, um, severance pay, things of that nature. So depending on how the vote goes, I would like to come back in and readdress the council on that. So this way we could figure out on what my next moves are, um, what could take place, because it is a regular session and I know that it could get passed. So other than that, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming here. Go ahead, Council. You know, I think his request to meet with us if he isn't selected, I think that should go back to EBND first. Yep. I'm going to step out for just a minute here. So. Okay, I'm running the show now.
Go ahead, Sergeant Arms. All yours. All right. I'm going to vote for the general manager for the East Wind Casino here. First, first one, Stanley Little White Man. Stanley Little White Man. Stanley Little White Man. Jermaine Garnier. Stanley Little White Man. Roger brings him back. Stanley Little White Man. Jermaine Garnier. Stanley Little White Man. Jermaine Garnier. Roger brings him back. Stanley Little White Man. Stanley Little White Man. Stanley Little White Man. Roger brings him back. Last one. Roger brings him back. Let's check it out. Okay, so we have Jermaine three, Roger four, Stanley nine. Is he gonna read it? Okay, so at this time, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Secretary. So um, we have a um, resolution for that, so I will read the resolution. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe appointing Stanley Little White Man as general manager of the Eastland Casino. Whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution, Article 6, and a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, September 17, 1851, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, April 29, 1868, and continues the nation-to-nation -nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe adopted its constitution and bylaws by referendum vote on December 14, 1935, in accordance with Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123, and under Article 3 of the Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas Article 4, Sections 1F of the Constitution of the Oglala Sioux Tribe authorizes the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council to manage all economic affairs and enterprises of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas such authority includes the establishment of economic enterprises, including the East Wind Casino enterprises, as well as the appointment of a general manager for such enterprise. 
And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribes Casino Enterprises have an immediate need for a general manager to ensure smooth operations and compliance with application laws and regulations and the position of general manager was advertised and the tribal council conducted interviews of candidates. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribes does hereby appoint Stanley Little White Man as a general manager of the Eastland Casino Enterprise and be it further resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribes does hereby delegate to the Economic and Business Development Committee the function of negotiating a contract with Stanley Little White Man for the position of the general manager of the Eastland Casino Enterprise and directs that such contract be forwarded to the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council for consideration and approval at the regular next session of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council and it's on schedule for March 2024. And be it further resolved that Stanley Little White Man shall comply with all employment requirements for the position of general manager, manager of the East Wind Casino Enterprise certification. Question. Yes, go ahead, Council Little Hallquist. So <clears throat> when the contract is negotiated and he has to wait till the end of March, meeting to get it approved? Is that what the resolution? It's what it says, but. I think that, I'm doesn't listening. it usually go to uh, uh, XB? I think it needs to go to XB for. For approval. Yeah, to go over the dollar amount and that way they don't have to wait till the end of March to come back. That's kind of the whole month. Yes, yes. That, oh, how much is it over? That the, is, well, yeah. that negotiate with him. If it's over 75,000, it's gonna have to go back to tribal council. Okay. Because our threshold for executive is only 75,000. Okay. But you negotiate that in EMBD. Okay. <laughs> So, Stan, Mr. A little white man, would you like to say a few words? Yes. Um, I thank you, Council. I will make sure that I do everything that'll make you guys proud, I guess, so to speak. But yeah, I am ready to work. I am ready to um, uh, start doing the things that I need to do, but there is also one thing that uh, I'd like to say is that I will work with uh, Prairie Winds uh, general manager, and I think we would be able to uh, bring Prairie Winds up as well. So anyway, thank you and appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Hope you love. Stanley. So I think we need a motion. Oh, go ahead, Councilman Dillon. A motion to approve uh, the selection of Stanley Little White Man and offer him a contract. And I think we should meet within two weeks to get that get back to a special session of council to accept that contract. And that way we can get started. And we need to ask Roger if he'll stay on for that period of time, the transition. And Shorty, the Shorty needs to be there too. So that's my motion. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilman Dillon, second by Councilman Watkins. Secretary, call for the vote. Uh, 
Wesley Hopkins Sr. Ho. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Oh. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Tyler Yellow, um, Tyler Lunderman. Yes. Mm. Sorry, sir. David Puyer. Don Ray Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Uh. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Sixteen, yes, unanimous. Motion carried. Go ahead, Councilman Hawkins. Thank you, Chairman. Donnie, um, you heard what he just made that motion to go in two weeks. Um, when will you be able to put your resignation in as my coordinator so I could get it advertised? Well, if it's in two weeks, I could do that and continue on for two weeks until it happens. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so next agenda item um, is the OST Land Committee. I'll turn it over to the chair. You know, Chairman, we got that um, two thirds one. We got these women sitting here. Can we get that done all the way on a election issue for Lake Creek? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be my we can do that. Yes. So we have a motion by Councilman Watkins, second. I have a second. Second by Councilman Young. Young man. Yes. All for the vote. Wesley Hawkins Senior. Oh. Jim Inks. Yep. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Senior. Yes. Howard Brooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Senior. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Yes. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Don Roy Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Uh, John Steele Sr. Craig Dillon. Yes. Unanimous 16 motion carried. Um, okay, Chair, um, Chair, we'll have um, Tiny get up, and I think the discussion they wanted brought to the council floor was, do we proceed with the election, or what's the decision of the council? Yes, you can go ahead. Okay, um, we had, for the Lake Creek election, we had one person, but she did not um anyway she went to supreme court and today's her so she wasn't certified we didn't certify her so we didn't hear anything at all but she, i don't know she tomorrow's her last day to hear from her from supreme court then we could if then we could go on with the what is it the next election of law and order wants us to do that. Go ahead, Councilwoman. Um, Tiny, I think at the uh, law and order committee, we asked, uh, you did run the election already for yeah. Lake Creek, right? Yeah. And they only had one candidate and they had to vote yes or no at the district. And the, the, they had a uh, majority was no votes. So that candidate didn't make it in. 
So they did come to the Law and Order Committee and they wanted to know what they should do if they should have another election because uh, in our election code, it doesn't say either. Mm -hmm. So today it's in front of us. So we need to, um, I guess, give them some direction as to what we wanna do. Um, and I think that what they're asking is that um, they should uh, they should have another election. They're gonna have to go back through finance committee and the finance committee is gonna have to review a budget that they have to submit for the next election for Lake Creek District. So uh, that'll be my motion to um, uh, allow for the election that they're asking for, but they need to go to the finance committee for the budget. That was what it was, right, Austin? Yeah. Councilwoman Halverson. Um, do you have a sample of the election? Because I had a few people from Lake Creek District say that there wasn't any notices posted and there wasn't a date on the election. So they didn't even know that there was an election happening there. We posted it, right? Do you have, Do you have a ex um No, we didn't sample? know if we should bring it. Oh, it's on my phone. Okay, you, you done? Councilman Dillon. You know, this, this whole election process was off a day or two because of the weather and the, the weather that we had. My, uh, my motion, I'll second Sonia's motion because there was election held and there was a vote. And that vote was unfavorable for her. But it was a duly, duly held election in Lake Creek District and people went out and voted. So I'll second your vote if you accept my amendments. Yeah. Have your motion. Can you can you uh, repeat that for the record? Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> it was a long one. Um, I made a motion to um, go ahead uh, to give the um, OST Election Commission uh, the go ahead to um, conduct another election for the Lake Creek District and to but to uh forward this to the finance committee because they still have to submit their budget to finance and then after that it'll go to executive board for your approval that's my motion with craig's amendments and what are craig's no i'm just kidding <laughs> all right <laughs> Okay, so we have a motion by Councilwoman, Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston, second by Councilman Dillon. All for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Inks? Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks? Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Oh. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. No. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Tyler Lenderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yes. Don Roy Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Uh. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Fifteen yes, one no. Motion carried. I right, thank you, um, Chairman. Also, Tanya and you guys go ahead and get that going, and then get the um, budget up to the finance committee next. All right, Chairman. That's about all we have. We'll go ahead and go to line. Okay. With that, we'll move on to the next uh, agenda item, uh, land committee, and I'll turn it over to the chair. Thank you, Chair. Stacy, could you read the resolution? Okay. 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 
Resolution of the Ogola Sioux Tribal Council of the Ogola Sioux Tribe and Unincorporated Tribe. Resolution of the Tribal Council of the Ogola Sioux Tribe approving the term limits of the Ogola Sioux Tribe's allocation committee. Whereas the Ogola Sioux Tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as the supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution, Article 4, and a signatory to Article 6, excuse me, and as a signatory to the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1851, 1 Stat 749, September 17, 1851, and the Treaty of Fort Laramie of 1868, 15 Stat 635, April 29, 1868, and continues the nation to nation relationship with the federal government. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. subsection 5123 by adopting the federally approved constitution and bylaws, and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas Articles 4, Sections 1F, 1K, 1M, and 1W empower the Tribal Council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and adopt laws protecting and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas the OST Land and Natural Resources Committee is a standing committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council who met with the quorum present to conduct business on the 14th day of February, 2024. And at such meeting did approve this resolution for presentation to the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council for their action. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe did adopt ordinance number 21-72, Oglala Sioux Tribe Grazing Code, on the 27th day of October, 2021, which ordinance sets forth the procedures to follow in regards to the grazing upon the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas ordinance number 21-72 at section 2C, Allocation Committee states that the initial allocation committee members selected, appointed during the 2022 OST election shall draw lots to determine whether the district they re represent shall hold an initial term of two or four years. And whereas lots were drawn on the 14th day of February, 2024, and it was determined that Pine Ridge, Oglala, Wakapamani, Pass Creek, lots were Excuse me. Whereas lots were drawn on the 14th day of February 2024, and it was determined that Pine Ridge, Oglala, Wakpomni, Pass Creek, and Eagle Nest District shall hold a four year term from 2022 until 2026, and that Medicine Rock, Porcupine, Wounded Knee, and Lake Creek District shall hold a two year term from 2022 until 2024. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council does hereby, based upon the recommendation of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Land Committee, certify the following terms of office for the districts on the OST allocation committee as listed herein. Four year term of office from 2022 to 2026. Pine Ridge, Oglala, Wakabamani, Pass Creek, and Eagle Nest. Two year term of office from 2022 to 2024. Madison, Porcupine, Wounded Knee, and Lake Creek. And be it further resolved that the OST election committee is mandated by ordinance number 20 72 to conduct all elections for the OST allocation committee, which election shall be for a four year term beginning in the elections for OST allocation committee in the 2024 OST general elections certification. Chair, I so move. The reason we did that too, for those are not on land committee, there's always been a confusion every two years while well, my terming up, somebody else's term. So this will be officially in to the file in the secretary's office. So that's what brought this all about. Thank you, I moved to adopt. Okay, um, I think we need to do a quorum check. Huh? Oh, okay. Um, so, so we have a motion by Councilman Puyer, um, second by Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston and Councilwoman Carlo. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Hope. Jim Meeks. Yes. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. 
Howard Brooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Oh. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. Anna Halverson. Ella Giancarlo. Yes. George Dumer Jr. Tyler Landerman. No. David Puyer. Yes. Don Roy Goldspear. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Thirteen yes, one not voting, two or one no and two not voting. Motion carried. Question. Go uh, ahead, Mr. Uh, comment. Uh, there's a little. There's a typo at the end of the certification, Casey, on February, twenty twenty three. I think it says. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next line item. Uh, right now, uh, Finance Committee has no agenda items. So we'll move on to law and order. And I'll turn it over to the chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, this was a motion made to be brought to the council. I think um, Rayanne was there and I'm gonna go ahead and let her explain it. Okay, so at the working session, <clears throat> the hair follicle issue came up. And um, so um, there, there was an action taken for uh, to null and void the drug testing that the de drug testing results that were taken at the last council meeting. And, um, and so that that uh, action passed. And then there was another one for um, uh, PBT's breathalyzer test uh, for the um, tribal council. Um, what I am going to ask is that the issue be tabled because we were also, the legal department was it, um, directed to do uh, some research, more research on this issue and bring back some recommendations at the next law and order, or two weeks uh, law and order committee. So we're in the midst of doing our research on the on this, and if you guys could table until we come back with our recommendations, um, I would appreciate that action. Councilman, for your. I, I thought the research was due to the what we wanted in the election ordinance and had nothing to do with the testing that was done during the regular council meeting. But it plays into the, the reliability of the test itself and that's what we're researching. So, um, you know, if you want to go ahead and move forward on this action, that's fine. Um, it's up to you guys. I was just thinking it would be easier done if clean more cleaner if we can continue our research and then bring back because whatever we decide on the election code is going to kind of um uh, impact not just your election code but your other other areas where you do hair follicle testing go ahead councilman so chair was, was there action i know the action was to have us all do hair follicles and what was to follow with that was there supposed to be action taken after that or what was the not really it wasn't stated just to do the test or to prove a point i guess from my understanding well uh, uh stacy did all our all the tests come back 
they all did return except for Mr. Meeks is the only one that didn't take his yet. <laughs> so the chair, you said the action was to prove a point. What point? I think we're all we were all there, you know, and it was it was more of I don't know the way I saw it was a challenge to for everyone to do one. Go ahead, Councilwoman Carlo. Thank you, Chair. What is that ordinance number that was passed out, I believe, that day? Um I don't I, I don't remember the ordinance number. Um I does I do believe it states that we are supposed to, to test once a year. If I am correct. And, and and going back to this day, um, I will reiterate what was sent to me. When the issue came up in regards to people being um banished, they were talking about um drug dealers, bootleggers, you know, all these different um um individual um issues i guess and and um i got a text from an individual stating you know um why 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 aren't we being tested if we're going to banish all these people for this and that why aren't we having drug testing be done to us and so garth made the motion and i was the second To do a hair follicle. Go ahead, Council. Councilman Dillon. I have a question. Okay. Councilman Dillon. You know, we're elected. We're officials. People look to us for direction and to set an example of what to do while we're in office. And so I believe they hold us to a higher standard. And I can't see us minimizing this in any way shape or form you know if an employee is caught with this they face consequences and that's what we should be held to because we're no better than our employees in fact the employees are what makes the wheels go around in this tribe they're here every day they do a job and so i for one am going to stand by that ordinance mm -hmm. and i would like to see the rest of these guys and if we're going to throw it out i'm going to bring a bong to the next council meeting we'll all take some hits all right you know, I'm being sarcastic here because that's what it's boiling down to. Either we follow the laws or we throw them all out and start over. You know, it took a lot of concentrate. It took a lot of work and effort to get these laws passed in the first place, and we're going to throw them out. And right now, we're waging a war on meth, and we're getting our butts kicked because of this. These examples we're setting to our people. So I think we, as a tribe. As a tribal council, as the executive board who are voted at, voted for in our districts and at large, must abide by the laws that would this council pass. Councilman Little Hawk Weston and Councilman Cross. You know, um, I think we had a long discussion at Law and Order Committee uh, about a couple weeks ago on in our working session, and I think that's why the attorney is uh recommending this but to me you know the ordinance states that we should have a hair follicle once a year this is after we get elected in but then um it doesn't say anything afterwards as to what's the next step what do we do next so my question today is um if there's some positives in the circle then uh what are we what are we going to do here because um, I heard the secretary, I think he said you, uh, through a group chat, you guys met with the legal and you guys deter discussed this issue. So, you know, we need to find out what uh, legal, uh, our attorneys, you know, uh, have to say about this because, you know, we need to know today what direction we need to go with it. Because I think right now there's really it just leave the uh, the ordinance just says it, but there's nothing afterwards to say what's the next step. Do we uh, we all file complaints or what? What's the what's the step to this? Because um, 
I think the more we discussed it last a uh, couple weeks ago was the Supreme Court is over ruling our election commission in all these election uh, appeals that are going to them because what they're stating in their uh, opinion is that because we made marijuana legal on the reservation with the medical uh, and recreational that uh, they're basically overruling the election commission. And so every appeal, this just latest one from Lake Creek, same way they overturned that one too. So to me, I think that in the beginning, it was a good thing because we said we wanted all elected officials to be uh, zero tolerance, alcohol, drug free. And we did it for a reason. And some of us sitting in this circle have been here when that law was created and when we passed it. And I'm one of them, as long as I think uh, uh, Davey, Austin, some of us been here that long to uh, have put this law together. But since that marijuana issue has come, and I'm gonna have to talk about it, it's come to now you see all the dispensaries on our reservation. And that's what the Supreme Court pointed out to us in that ruling that you have this many dispensaries on the reservation, you legalized it, you said your people made it legal. You know, we all know on the federal side, it's still considered a, um, what is it? Um, uh, it's still considered, uh, what was that word that, uh, what? Oh yeah, schedule one. That's what they still consider it to be a schedule one. So the fed, federal side, they see it that way. And Greg Peterman always says that to us, and he says it in council to us too. He'll tell us that they still look at it that way. But you know, there's more. We had a lot of discussion in that law and order meeting that day. That's why we asked the attorneys from those uh, the legal opinions from the Supreme Court. That's the reason why we they're back to where they're at. They're asking us uh, to give them time to research this whole thing and to bring it back with some options because what we're going to have to do is put it into the election code. We're gonna to have to adopt some laws to put in the election code for the next incoming election, this next one. Because right now, we all we have in there is a hair follicle. Testing must be done at, when you run for office. But now that this marijuana thing came about, it changed everything. So that's the reason where we're at right now. So what do we do? What is your, I know your recommendation, Ryan, but uh, what do you think there's nothing in the ordinance that says what's our next step to that or what what you guys is discussion there so i'm looking at ordinance 10 1002 and i was looking for um yeah so if there's a positive then um the test, uh, if it involves a tribal council, turns the results over the tr to the tribal attorney general, and we don't have one right now, so that's that's another uh, piece of it. Um, I, and then a positive would be the grounds for impeachment. Um, but the Supreme Court, in their opinion, um, is question has determined that the test is unreliable and also that um, the marijuana portion of it uh, is because the tribe legalized it, um, the test, it shouldn't be positive for marijuana. I mean, they, the, the test for marijuana should be exempt. So um, there's kind of, and so far in our, in our research, what we've come across is we got some split decisions in the, in the state uh, or federal courts so we want to do more research on it. Um, there are companies and courts that still use uh, hair follicle testing. Um, so we want to be able to make sure that um, we're, we're, we're not shutting it down completely. It looks like there is some use for it, but it comes back to reliability. And so that's what we're trying to research. And right now, if there's an appeal, we'll lose the appeal just based off the, our Supreme Court's ruling. So that's where we're at right now. And in committee, um, 
the committee wanted to keep the hair follicle test and that's why we are trying to research whether or not it, it's feasible to do that. And, and if not, what are some options? Okay, Councilman Lunderman. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, the way I see it is there's an ordinance and it states we do one random uh, drug test, right? Okay, but on the other hand, Supreme, the Supreme Court is ruling, you know, their rulings different. And so there's, it, there's a con, it's, it's um, clashing. And, you know, I think it, um, it, it may only make sense to me that, you know, maybe we, I'll, I'll make that motion to table it and give our attorney two weeks to, 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 to come up with a, I guess, a, a solution or what our next step is, because I think those are, we can't be having this over here and then something else going on over there. You know, I think we, we need to all be on, on, on one track and going in the same direction with our Supreme Court. So I think um, I'll make that motion to table it and allow our attorney to do her um, okay, so her diligence and we'll review it again. So motion by louder. Councilman Lunderman, second by Councilwoman Carlo. Okay, second by Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. Okay, so let's uh, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yeah. Ryan Jumpin Eagle Sr. Yes and no. Yes. Howard Rutz. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. No. Oh. Wendell Youngman Jr. No. James Cross. Oh. No. Ella Giancarlo. No. George Dreamer Jr. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Yeah. Don Roy Gosper. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. Uh, John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Go ahead, Councilman uh, Meeks. Uh, I just have one question. What exactly are we testing for? And do we have to, if we take this test now, do we have to take another one in August? <laughs> yes, go ahead, Councilman Puyer. Chair, uh, ask a question for the secretary. After that test was done, uh, Mr. Jumpin' Eagle and some of them were gone and Mr. Meeks. And we gave a time frame for them to take the test. And Mr. Meeks didn't take it yet. So, well, you said you didn't. Told you told us. So, what's the concept? What, so, Mr. Meeks is supposed to go take the test. And if he don't, then what? Okay, Councilwoman Carlo. Thank you, Chair. You know, we can sit here and we'll argue this all day into the next day and probably weeks on end. But, you know, Craig mentioned something that we should be held to a higher standard. And, and I respect that. And I believe that that's what our people ask of us. And um, I think if you guys want to kill this, it's political suicide for you. So you go right ahead and you make your motions to do whatever you want to do with it. I'll never support taking this 
um, drug testing out of our election code. So um, thank you and have a good day because I'm out of here. Okay, Secretary, call for the vote. Chairman. Okay, uh, so hang on, hang on. We got to run this motion here. Or no, I'm sorry. I want to announce it. Got it. 11 yes, 3 no, 1 not voting, motion carried. Okay, who had a question? Yeah, go ahead, Councilman. I, I just got my test um, today from the secretary, and um, for the record, my test negative on everything. So that's for the record, because I want to be, I didn't want to take that test for nothing, you know, because we, we went through a lot that day, and, um, you know, we, we took action, and I, I voluntarily went on it, did it, and my test came back, so I'm negative on everything. Thank you. Fine. Um, you know, um, hang on just a second. Mr. President. Okay, so we're, we're, we're just gonna move on to the next one until we get some solid answers. So end of discussion with, uh, with this motion already carried. <clears throat> Chairman, I think um, number two goes with just the drug testing. But number three is an issue that um, was brought up and um, it should, it, it was um, a committee action that no tribal council should be authorized to use any OST property vehicles into, and then it says forward on to council. And I thought we had a law in place already for that. Wasn't there a law in place that, Stacy? Chairman, um, one of the motion makers um, wants to discuss number two, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to him. No, we did number, number one. Number we three? One. We did number one, and um, I was gonna go ahead and go on to three, but the motion makers wanna discuss number two. That's tabled. Remember, she said not, one and not two. Not number two. No, she said one and two. She wanted those to be tabled. Yeah. That's why we include it in there. Okay, number well, three. number three, I just want to make sure, was there a law in place for that, Stacey? I'm researching that right now. Um, there is something regarding the um, the use of tribal vehicles for, um, like, the programs. It's in the personnel policies and procedures. That one's under 2179. But I believe there was one passed regarding tribal um, officials, and so we're... Um, so that we're, I'm having my staff research that one. But the the one regarding um, where all of the vehicles have to be um, 
placed in a secure area. That one is Ordinance 2179. And that is part of the, uh, in the policies and procedures. So in, the, in that policy, do we enforce it? That's what I'm saying. I think that's what the one couple of council people brought up the issue that you still see these vehicles on weekends in town, Rapid City and all, and they do, they do have the OST um, license plate on them. So who's enforcing it? Is it supposed to be the directors of that program to keep them vehicles parked? Go ahead. Isn't that the ordained of that particular ordinance? Um, it says, um, therefore be ordained that the Ogallala City Tribal Council hereby amend section 15-500.1 of the Financial Management Manual Ordinance 1727 as amended to read as follows. All tribal program vehicles are required to be parked in a secure fenced area as designated by the property and supply director and the chief of staff before and after working hours. All exemptions must be justified with written approval by the property and supply director and the chief of staff. Vehicles may not be driven home unless authorized by tribal and federal law and by the terms and conditions of all applicable federal grant or award. Such use shall be approved in advance by the property and supply director and the chief of staff. Any employee found to be in violation of this policy with documented evidence will be guilty of committing misuse of tribal property. Penalties shall be set forth in Chapter 27 of the Oglala Sioux Tribe Personnel Policies and Procedures Manual. Each tribal program vehicle shall be marked with a decal identifying it as a tribal vehicle and identifying the tribal program to which the vehicle is assigned. So it's the Chief of Staff and Property, the Director of Property, I think it should start being enforced. And I also want the Council to know that you know, these issues are brought up. It ain't because they're going after anybody or anything, but these are concerns that they get the calls from and, you know, ask us to deal with it. So I'm just letting you guys know that, you know, it has to be dealt with. Go ahead, Councilman Lillard Weston. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, I think that number three under law and order committee was a committee action that was forwarded to council and it was uh, discussed in our law and order committee meeting that we have tribal council, some tribal council members utilizing tribal vehicles. And I think that what the action was, was that we wanted uh, to forward that on to, uh, that we wanted to forward on to council because we felt that um, every one of us in this circle have a car, I'm hoping. And I'm hoping that because we get uh, mileage, we have a line item for travel, for line, a line item for mileage, that a lot of us use our own vehicles to and from our meetings. And I think that what we've been hearing and seeing is that some tribal council are utilizing tribal vehicles, you know, to, uh, I don't know where they've been going, but I think that uh, we get the calls, we get uh, like, Austin saying it's not only on the program side, you know, I could understand uh, directors, you know, have the oversight of those program vehicles and they need to make sure their vehicles are parked after hours, unless they're on call. But uh, what we discussed was the tribal council. We understand that the executive board, and I think that's where Stacy said there's something in there. I know remember we passed, but uh, that the president, vice president, I don't think the secretary does, but uh, uh, the treasurer does. And uh, I don't think the fifth member, but those three have a tribal vehicle that they utilize to go to and from their meetings. But we specifically talked about tribal council that we should not be utilizing a tribal vehicle uh, to and from meetings or to and from uh, doing whatever, because um, those are the concerns that uh, came to us. And that's why we discussed it law and order and so our action was just to um, make sure that that was not happening, that we forward it over to the council. So that's what we discussed in law and order. It wasn't really mainly the program directors, but uh, mainly the council. 
Thank you. Councilman Jumpin' Eagle. So, Chair, do you have a, your own personal vehicle? I do. Okay. Um, that's what Sonia makes it sound like. This council has personal vehicles and executive board doesn't, so they could use tribal vehicles. But I borrowed a tribal vehicle before, but you don't get a gas card with them vehicles. You put your own gas in there. You make it sound like we just because we get a tribal vehicle that you have a gas card. No gas cards come with them vehicles. Chairman, does your vehicle come with a gas card? No, it doesn't. See, there we go. So um, I think it. you're allowed it's a percentage of mileage. Mm -hmm. It's not the full amount, yeah. but it's a percentage. Yeah. But I just wanted to make, make that part clear, you know? Yes. Uh, it is, even though you borrow a tri tribal vehicle, you don't get a gas card with that vehicle. Yes, you just get a, uh, a de decreased amount allotted to for your travel. We understand that. Yeah, yeah, we understand that part. I'll go ahead, Councilman uh, Gosper. Thank you, Chairman. You know, I just want to touch on this issue a little bit too, because I've been getting calls, texts. I heard this recently. Got a text a couple minutes ago, but Brianna, is the law and order? I mean, the um, police are they allowed to take their vehicles to wrap it if they live up there and drive them back and forth? Because I'm getting a couple couple texts about that. I don't know what the current policy is. That's a chief or police question. Um, I do know that they you do drive them up there for service and maintenance. So. I don't know if I don't know if they're using them because they live up there or not. Yeah, I mean, um, they they do take them up there for maintenance and work on their their equipment attached to those vehicles. And I, if it if it if it's set up like the government, you know, the government allows you to go take a lunch and and a certain uh, mileage to on your way to your your point A and B destination. Or yes, uh, if, if it's official business, um, it's probably what you're seeing. I don't know. Question or comment. Thank you, Chairman. Yes. You know, I think at uh, one of our law and order meetings, uh, Chief did mention that, you know, we do have police officers that do live in Rapid City and they do come back and forth. And I do know that because when you go to Rapid City, you'll see some of our police uh, units parked at these apartment buildings or trailer uh trailer uh you know parks there's just right one right down below that when you go into rapid city that trailer park on the right hand side there's a police officer living there you see their unit there you know another one over on this on the east side so you know you see our units park like that and then sometimes you know when you're going to rapid you'll pass some coming back towards Pine Ridge, you might, you could say they're maintenance, but uh, the chief did mention that we do have them coming back and forth, you know, from Rapid City because of uh, not enough uh, housing, you know, on the reservation. That's another issue that um, we're dealing with. So that's why they uh, were working with housing to try to see how we can uh, utilize one house for the cop to live in. So those are things we've been discussing in law and order with housing, but again, uh, they do go back and forth. So I don't know um, exactly in their policy if it's written that way, but um, they do travel back and forth. Just mm -hmm. wanted to clarify that. Okay, any more questions? Good. I thank you, Chairman. That's, I think that's the end of the issue on law and order. A according to Sonia, she just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to the next uh, line item, uh, HHS. I'll turn it over to Chair. Thank you, Chair. Um, Stacy, I don't have no documents for HHS. I don't have... I don't have the packet. Huh? Oh, the packet that you passed out the other day. Oh, that's in my car. Okay. Do you have yours, Linda? Have it right here. Thank you. Okay. 
So number one is resolution of the Gosu Tribe Tribal Council authorizing OLHA to purchase the Sean Keith HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties from HUD for $10. Whereas the Gosu Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Organization Act of 1934 25 USC subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws. And under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gosu Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. Whereas, in order to address low income housing needs on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the Tribal Council of the Gosu Tribe, a federally recognized tribe adopted by ordinance of Gosu Tri- Housing Authority, and whereas the Gosu Tribal Council enacted Ordinance Number 98 07 on February 9, 1998, establishing the charter for the Gosu Lakota Housing OSLH as the successor to the Gosu Housing Authority, and whereas the Gosu Tribal Council revised and adopted a new Charter for SLH by Ordinance Number 07-43, the Charter on September 12, 2007, and set up Oglala Sioux Lakota Housing OSLH as the tribally designated housing entity for the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council revised and adopted a new charter for OSLH by Ordinance Number 20-63, adopted on September 30, 2020, and whereas the name of the OSLH was changed to the Oglala Lakota Housing Authority, OLHA. By resolution, and whereas the Lawsuit Tribe has established the Oglala Lakota Housing Authority to develop public housing units on the Pine Ridge Reservation, and whereas Section 184 is a tool for tribes to bring more housing to tribal communities, and whereas OLHA has worked with Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD to determine eligible properties for OLHA to purchase under Section 184. And whereas it is necessary for the tribe to grant authority to the OLHA to execute the purchases of the Section 184 homes from HUD, and whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council has determined it should authorize the OLHA to purchase HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties, whereby the borrowers have defaulted on the loans and the lenders have assigned the loans to HUD, and whereas HUD has prescribed a purchase price of $10 per property, and whereas HUD possesses ownership in the note for the home and land lease, and whereas OLHA seeks to purchase the HUD property previously owned by Sean Keith, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Glossu Tribal Council authorizes OLHA to purchase the Sean Keith HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties from HUD for $10, and be it further resolved that the OLHA designates the Chief Executive Officer to provide such information as may be required and execute on behalf of OLHA all documents necessary to perfect the purchase of the HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties. Motion. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Jampanigo, second by Councilman Watkins. Chairman, I think we lost our quorum. Found him up. Where's Buzz? <laughs> okay. You need 14. Stand Um, there's some snacks back here too. We have a um, meat tray and some other stuff back here. Well, I don't think we can run the motion, but well. Okay. Oh, yes. So, well, there he is right there.
Okay, so. Okay, Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Minks. Ryan Jumpin' Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins, Sr. Oh. Wendell Youngman, Jr. James Cross. Yes. George Dreamer, Jr. Yes. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Don Roy Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. John Steele, Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. 14 unanimous. Motion carried. I keep going, Chair. All right. Resolution of the Gulf Street Tribal Council authorizing OLHA to purchase the Helen Riddell HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties from HUD for $10. Whereas the Gulf Street Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Organization Act of 1934-25 USC subsection 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaws. And under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Gulf Street Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe. And whereas, in order to address low-income housing needs on the Pioneer Indian Reservation, the Tribal Council of the Glossu Tribe, a federally recognized tribe, adopted by ordinance the Glossu Housing Authority. And whereas, the Glossu Tribal Council enacted Ordinance Number 98-07 on February 9, 1998, establishing the Charter of the Glossu Lakota Housing OSLH as a successor to the Glossu Housing Authority. And whereas, the Glossu Tribal Council revised and adopted a new charter for SLH by ordinance number 07-43, the charter on September 12, 2007, and set up Oglala Sioux Lakota Housing OSLH as the tribally designated housing entity for the Oglala Sioux Tribe. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council revised and adopted a new charter for SLH by ordinance number 20-63, adopted on September 30th, 2020, and whereas the name of OSLH was changed to the Oglala Lakota Housing Authority, OLHA by resolution. And whereas the Glossu Tribe has established the Glossu Lakota Housing Authority to develop public housing units on the Pine Ridge Reservation, and whereas Section 184 is a tool for tribes to bring more housing to tribal communities, and whereas OLHA has worked with Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD to determine eligible properties for OLHA to purchase under Section 184, and whereas it is necessary for the tribe to grant authority to the OLHA to execute the purchases of the Section 184 homes from HUD, and whereas the Glossu Tribal Council has determined it should authorize the OLHA to purchase HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties, whereby the borrowers have defaulted on the loans and the lenders have assigned the loans to HUD. And whereas HUD has prescribed a purchase price of $10 per property, and whereas HUD possesses ownership in the note for the home and the land lease, and whereas OLHA seeks to purchase the HUD property previously owned by Helen Retta. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Glossary Tribal Council authorizes OLHA to purchase the Helen Reda HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties from HUD for $10, and be it further resolved that the OLHA designates the Chief Executive Officer to provide such information as may be required and to execute on behalf of OLHA all documents necessary to perfect the purchase of the HUD Section 184 guaranteed properties motion. Okay, motion by Councilman Jump Regal, second by Councilwoman Little Hawk Weston. Secretary, call for the vote. Um, Ryan, your resolutions don't have the sovereignty clause, so we'll be adding them to that. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Meeks. Yeah. Ryan Jump and Eagle, Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr., oh. Wendell Youngman Jr., James Cross, George Dreamer Jr., Yes. Tyler Lunderman, David Puyer, Donna Gosper, Sonia Little Hawk Weston, uh, John Steele Sr., Yes. Craig Dillon, Yes. Unanimous 14, motion carried. Chair, so can we move this education one up? Yes. For Mr. Phelps, um, Stacy, can you read this resolution? Yes. Yep. I'll just dive right in. Resolution of the of the Tribal Council of the Glossu Tribe requesting the South Dakota congressional representatives and senators to intervene and seek reversal of the denial of the I-612 application 
for waiver of the foreign residency requirement for Ms. Malord's Conless. Whereas the Ogallasu tribe is a sovereign tribal nation that has entered into treaties as a supreme law of the land with the United States government pursuant to the U.S. Constitution Article 6 and its signature, signature signatory to the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851, 1 Stat 749, September 17, 1851, and the Treaty of the Fort Laramie of 1868-15 Stat 635, April 29, 1868, and continues the nation-to-nation relationship with the federal government, and whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribe organized under Section 16 of the Indian Reorganization Act of 1934, 25 U.S.C. 5123 by adopting a federally approved constitution and bylaw and under Article 3 of the Tribal Constitution, the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council is the governing body of the tribe, and whereas Article 4, Section 1F, 1K, 1L, 1W, empower the tribal council to manage the economic affairs of the tribe, protect and preserve the property of the tribe, adopt laws governing the conduct of persons on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, and adopt laws protecting the and promoting the health and general welfare of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and its membership. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Education Committee is a standing committee of the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council who met with a quorum to pre present to conduct business on the 12th day of February, 2024, and at such a meeting did approve this resolution for presentation of the Tribal Council for their action. And whereas the Oglala Sioux Tribal Council Resolution Number 70-51 created the American Horse School Board empowered to administer and maintain the American Horse School. And whereas the Constitution of the American Horse School authorized the school board to manage the affairs of the school and to adopt policies for proper management of the school, its educational programs and personnel. And whereas the Pine Ridge Reservation has been experiencing a shortage of local certified teachers that are available to provide a high quality education to the students upon the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And whereas in order to meet the educational needs of its students, schools and Pine Ridge Indian Reservation have, have had to hire international teachers through non-immigrant immigrant visa exchange programs. And whereas the American Horse School has had to significantly increase the number of international teachers from the Philippines that are working in capacity as certified classroom teachers. And whereas the American Horse School has determined that in order to improve student learning outcomes, the international teachers from the Philippines must be successfully acclimated and transitioned into the school and the community as quickly as possible. And whereas Ms. Malord's Connellis is an international teacher from the Philippines and has worked at American Horse School for several years and serves as a cultural ambassador aiding international teachers by assisting them to understand the language, culture, community, and educational differences that the teachers will encounter while working at the school and residing locally. And whereas the cultural transition work that Ms. Malord's Connellis completes improves the educational experiences that American Horse students have while working with international teachers from the Philippines and greatly improves the localized experiences that citizens and teachers from the Philippines has, and whereas the American Horse School recognized the vital role that Ms. Malord's Connellis has in serving as the designated cultural ambassador for international teachers from the Philippines at American Horse School, and whereas American Horse School encouraged and rigorously supported Ms. Malord's Connellis submission of her I-612 application for waiver of the foreign residence requirements so Ms. Malord's Connellis can continue in her role as a high qualified certified classroom teacher and cultural ambassadors to international teachers from the Philippines at American Horse School. And whereas the U.S. Department of State, USDOS, has advised the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS, they are recommending that the request to waive the two year foreign residency requirement filed by Malord's Conless be denied. And therefore, be it resolved that the Tribal Council of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, based on the recommendation of the OST Education Committee, does formally request the South Dakota Congressional Representative and the Senators to intervene and seek a reversal of the denial of the waiver of the two-year foreign residence requirement of Section 212E of the Immigration and Nationality Act, INA, followed by, filed by Ms. Malord's Conless. Certification. Okay, motion by Councilman Cross, second by Councilman Dillon. Secretary, call for the vote. Wesley Hawkins, Sr. Oh. Jim Inks. 
Ryan Jumpin' Eagle Sr. Yes. Howard Rooks. Yes. Austin Watkins Sr. Oh. Wendell Youngman Jr. Yes. James Cross. Yes. George Dreamer Jr. Tyler Lunderman. Yes. David Puyer. Don Roy Gosper. Yes. Sonia Little Hawk Weston. Ha. John Steele Sr. Yes. Craig Dillon. Yes. Go ahead, Councilor Still. Yeah, we have uh, several Filipino teachers at Wounded District School. What's happening at OLC so we can't get our own people in there? Okay. So, 14, yes. Zero no, zero abstain, zero not voting. Motion carry. Okay, I, I do believe uh, Councilman Goldsbear um, excused himself. Yes, yeah, so we. Um, um, Chairman. Yes, I think John asked, asked a question. Let him answer it, please. Okay. Um, you know, we, it's the only option available, um, sadly. And I think, um, you know, the, the problem is, is, you know, when you have kids, what's the worst thing for kids? Inconsistency and, you know, lack of consistent adults. All of these programs that we're using the backfill teachers are, they all expire every two or three years, whether it's TFA, they come in for two years, then most of them leave. These visa programs are only good for two or three years, and then they have to leave. And so um, it, it's it's a problem, and it's going to be a bigger problem for the tribal communities. That I mean, And unfortunately, a lot of people don't think there's a teacher shortage anymore because we have 120 applications waiting for teachers, but they're all Filipino. So we have almost no local teacher applications anymore. But... People have kind of moved on because um, if you have 120 certified applications sitting in your mailbox, you think it's not a problem anymore. But in the long run, it's a big problem because uh, if the immigration rules change and they cut off those visas, we're going to be flattened for no teachers because every school we have, every, almost every one of our classrooms are Filipino teachers now. Pepper Council, uh, I hear a lot of people running around saying, we got to tell our own stories. We got to teach our own tradition. We got to do our own thing. We got to. We're turning our kids over to foreign teachers. That was the Indian teacher that wanted his teacher. Well, tell them to stop running around talking about culture and tradition. I'll make a motion. I I mean, the, the, the irony of this thing that you guys just passed today is we're fighting to keep an, and, and who, she's a great teacher. She really, really is. But she's been here about four or five years, and she's just now got her feet stabilized where she knows the culture, the community. So we're fighting for her because she helps transition those other teachers in faster because we lose them in two years. So if we don't have somebody like her, because the language barriers now are no longer Lakota, they're Filipino, which we have no ability to overcome that. So she helps get them curriculum faster. She helps them do standards better and faster because she speaks their language. So it's incredibly ironic, but it's where we're at. Um, Go bring some rosebudders over. They Rosebud at St. Francis School, they have 24 Filipino teachers in their school. So they have had them longer than us. So it's it's a problem. But you guys could do a few things really easy. 
you could expand your teacher certification process to do it locally. And instead of just going off to Praxis, you guys could go off of OLC's degree with tutoring, with oversight. And, you know, some states are adding like four or five ways to become teachers instead of one. And you guys could do that as a tribe and get your own sets of teachers. So, yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. So, um, we lost quorum here, so I think we're going to recess till tomorrow. So those those of you who stayed, uh, thank you uh, for sticking around and uh, conducting business. And tomorrow we'll pick up at HHS committee. Recording stopped.